stories help us to understand the world around us. They allow us to laugh. They allow us to cry. They give us the ability to feel and provide us with an outlet to heal. Join me as I get to know some of the amazing people behind the stories that we read in order to truly discover the story that has been hidden within each of us. My name is Bree Smith, and this is the Author Push Talk Show. Welcome to another episode of the Author Push Talk Show. Today, I have a phenomenal guest. She has been a gospel artist, and now she is re- actually writing her very first book, Daddy Don't Disappoint. Welcome to the show, Elisha Eli- Janine. Thank you. <laughs> it's so great to be on here, Bree. It's so great to be on here. Yes, ma'am. So can you tell the uh, audience just a little bit about yourself? A little bit about myself. So my mom named me Alicia. Um, I didn't know until later because she said she she thought I was really special. So she named me Alicia. And I did not like the name because it's like uh, Elisha in the Bible. And I didn't want to be a guy. <laughs> but I've, I've since studied about him. And I like him. I like him. And so my name is like it could be male or female. But I'm definitely a female. Okay. Um, I... Growing up, I started I started reading when I was three. I started writing in cursive when I was four. Um, and those were tame things. Those were those were tame things. Um, I got in trouble when I used my voice, my speaking voice. And um, so my whole life's battle, it, the battle has been for my voice. And um, it's very... I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, to be singing and writing books and stuff, it's it's just the opposite of how I was conditioned um, growing up. So, and even in the church, just um, you know, you could say amen and stuff like that, but not too much more than that. You know. <laughs> so I'm excited for this time in my life to see the switch from being intimidated to use my voice and and and, the, and now being free to use my voice. Hey man, I love that cuz you're right. I think so many of us especially if you grew up in that type of household with trauma and pain, um part of my backstory is I grew up in an abusive household. Yes. And it told me what goes on this house stays in this house type thing. Don't you go out there telling people our business. And, and being like very shut down and it's like but I have something to say and I have something you know and so I, I love that you know and I think a lot of us need to get to that point but I know it comes through the freedom of the Holy Spirit where you get to that point where it's like wait a second God didn't cause me to be in bondage I have been caused to, I'm free I'm free in him he came to liberate me he came to set the captives free and so I love when you just talked about that so amen to that and I definitely want to dive into your book, Daddy Don't Disappoint. So where did this idea come from? Uh, Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I came up with the title, Don't Disappoint Daddy, because as I was sharing it with my publisher, um, it was first going to be called Inner Vows. And she said, tell me more about that. And I said, I got in trouble. I got in trouble I was already in trouble, <laughs> but I got it, it escalated and I exasperated by making inner vows related to the trauma that I was experiencing. And um, she said, what are one of those inner vows? And I said, one of the inner vows was to not disappoint my daddy. Not disappoint, whatever you do, don't disappoint him. And so that became the name of the book, Don't Disappoint Daddy. Yeah. So <laughs> I go through some of the other inner vow. I go through the other inner vows that I made that did not help my, help my situation at all in the book. And then um, and then I, I talk about a turnaround. I talk about a turnaround. Yeah. And I'm hoping that when people read the book that that their inner vows would surface 
the inner vowels that don't serve them well, so that um, they might see a pathway to change how they view their past. Mm, I love that. I love that. Yeah, it's almost like um, like Moses, you know, mm -hmm. like he to help, literally help set the captive free. Wow, that is powerful. So can you give us some examples of some inner vows that you have in there or like one that really stuck out in particular uh, that you can tell the audience about just a little bit? Well, let me see. I was I was thinking of one the other day about how um, there was there was one there was one vow I made. I don't talk about this one in the book, but I'll, I'll talk about how um, actually I do talk about this one in the book about how daddy didn't like our names and he told me so so he said i don't like um i don't like the name alicia and so i'm puzzled because you've been calling me this and i'm i, I really don't know what to do with this but my vow was to not be like an alicia whoever she was i didn't know who she was but I was not going to be like her because I wanted to please my father so much. And if that meant that I was not, if that meant not being who he's, who, you know, and Alicia, then I was going to, I was bound and determined not to be her. I don't even know who she is. I don't know who she is. So you can already see the exercise and futility. I don't even, I don't know who, I don't know who she is. She's somewhere out there. I've never heard of her before because I never heard anybody else have my name. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to steer clear from her so I can please Danny. Wow. That's powerful. And I don't think a lot of times, because I've talked to my parents, I can talk to them now about this. Like then I can talk to them. A lot of times parents don't realize that what they say to their kids at a young age can be detrimental because you carry that into your adulthood. And then exactly. it can and, and and create branches in, in how you view yourself and in, in, in your marriage and you know raising children and your workplace and your career all these types of things and so it's just like you know we really got to be careful what we say you know life and death's in the power of your tongue and so that is very powerful because I had something similar like that with me and my dad where he had talked where he literally would call me up my name and it just, and it would bother me because I'm like, really? That's how you feel about me? And I'm like 12 years old, you know? And that damaged me, you know, really damaged me to the core of who I was until, you know, and the Lord had to come in there and help me to rebuild that area. So I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that you talk about that because you're right. Like whoever that Alicia was out there in the world had nothing to do with me. I'm your daughter, you know? And, and so, wow, that is uh, very powerful. Yes, ma'am. Whoo, that's. Yeah, that did something to me. Yeah, <laughs> that, that must have hit, you know, and people would not know that because I was always out front. I've always been out front, even though I did not want to be out front. And so, um, you know, we don't, when we don't know someone's story, we make up a story. I, I, we all do. We all do. And um, people really thought I was really confident and you know, well, like I'm settled and everything, but I was scared to death most of my life doing what I was doing because there was all these intimidating voices and bullying, bullying voices from the enemy that, um, that often manifests in other people after a while. So there was, there was an inner, tur inner tur turmoil and it was relentless. And yet I was foolish enough. <laughs> I was foolish enough to believe God. I'm like, somehow you, there's an abundant life that is for me. You died to give me and I'm bound and deter as scared as I am. And as intimidated as I am, I'm bound and determined to, as the scripture say, lay hold, you know, lay hold of it. And, um, I did not know when it was going to happen, how it was going to happen, but I was in agreement with God. I was in agreement with God, even if, even when I didn't see it. And I didn't see it for so, so long. 
But now, of course, you know, when we look back, we see his hand in everything, right? And so this, this book is a, it's a look back. Instead of, I want my legacy to be um, what it says in, at the end of Psalm 23, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And when I look back, I saw shame and blame. And I didn't want that to be my legacy. I want, I want goodness and mercy to follow me. So when I look back, that's what I want to see. So I needed to tell, be able to tell my story from a different perspective. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So what is your goal for the book? Um, why are you writing this book? Who do you help to uh, help transform or even help them set them free and get them out of bondage? Well, as I was saying, I, I wrote it for one reason, and that was really so my I could reclaim my voice. Um, and then I wrote it because I wanted a better legacy for my my children and their children and on so so on and so forth. But as I was writing, it was that I realized that there was a lot of premature death in my family. And I didn't know that when I started. I mean, I knew that when I started writing, but I didn't know it was linked to the, the abortions that I had as a teen. So that theme in the book about the abortions um i'm hoping it would it would benefit people by bringing placing the shame and the blame where it belongs and you know we don't wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers so if we can get the shame and blame off of ourselves and off of other people if we can see a pathway to that then i'm hoping that it will empower other people to to see their their past painful decisions in a different light and bring them into this 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 open space that is grace and mercy field yeah I, yeah because so many of us are suffering suffering in silence because the enemy has put the has put the blame and the shame squarely on us and he, he he doesn't want to take any credit for it so i want to i want to take responsibility for my part but also show the pathway to where we can look back and say surely goodness and mercy is following me surely surely yeah yeah it's a powerful testimony i i can't wait to get this book because i'm gonna have to read this myself <laughs> like really keep me in touch when this actually comes out i want to purchase it um, what would you say is one of your greatest strengths as a writer? One of my greatest strengths as a writer is that I, I try to bring the reader into the scene. I, I want the reader to be an eyewitness to the scene. So now you, you get to come into my world. You get to come into my world. Uh, it's just like a good movie. You know, you're all drawn in and then, and then wait a minute, you know, and then you realize I didn't, I didn't even eat the popcorn that I popped, you know? <laughs> so I, uh, my strength is to draw, draw the reader in, draw the reader in. Yeah. To be an eyewitness. I love that. Cause not everybody is able to do that as writers, like being that strong of a writer to where you feel like, man, I'm right here with the, the author, I'm right here with them. I see it. And I love it. You know, it's the power of vision. And if you yeah. can, then you know that you can achieve it. You know? so, yeah. Well, Cause you know, those act, you know, they're actors. They played on several, you know, they play, you've seen them play on all these different things, but they're so convincing. Yeah. They're so, you know, you, you, but in the, in this book, it's not it's not acting and you're not just watching it it's you're in there too and you're like whoa whoa so i feel like it's like a a, a good a, how a good actor draws you in to the story yeah yeah 
So what do you think uh, was one of the most surprising things that you discovered while creating your book? One of the most surprising things is that I thought my healing was complete. And as I'm writing the book, there were some other things that were uncovered and I had to stop. I had to stop and process it. I have to stop um, because for me, for me personally, that my personal goal in love is to always be authentic. So um, as you know, I also sing. So if I can't, if I can't sing this song authentic, if I can't come from an authentic place, I already know it's not going to be delivered correctly. Um, this, so it, it transferred into uh, the book. Um, I like to be authentic and I can't skirt past this issue that just came up. I can't do it. I've got to deal. I've got to stop and deal with it. Yep. I know I have a timeline, but I have to be congruent with the message. I have to be, when, when people look closer at me, they, they, they'll, they'll see that same thing. There won't be any change. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Cause I don't think a lot of us do that. Some people, well, I would pray that they would stop and process, but you're right. Um, Cause even at that time I was doing, um, going back in my own history, writing my children's book, I, the Lord had to start sending me to therapy and I had to start uncovering a lot of that trauma because I was like, wow, I didn't know. Cause my first book was about my dad, ironically. Uh, and, and, and I had to really talk to talk that out and, and dig deep into that. And so I'm really glad that you brought up that about processing. Cause I'm a very, I believe in therapy. I know a, a lot of people in the church are like, no, just pray, just believe. And that's it. And, and I believe in deliverance wholeheartedly. I've gotten deliverance and therapy, but I do believe that sometimes like naming God will take you through a process, you know, like you might not be delivered on the spot and that's okay. You had to go through a process. You had to dip seven times, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I'm just glad you brought that up because that, because like I said, a lot of people, you don't hear a lot of people in the church talk about that. It's always like, mm -mm, you better believe in God. You have that faith, you know? Um, yeah, we do, each, we do each other a disservice. The church has done a good job of, 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 of um, teaching us to forgive. They've done an excellent job on that. Um, but my question was after that, I, Jesus, I know you can forgive me of my sins, but can you do something about the sin that was perpetrated on me in my innocence? Can you do something about that sin? Can you do something? But because that's the effects of the sin. So I had already forgiven, but I didn't understand how I was impacted by someone else's sin. I want Jesus, can you do something about that? And the answer is yes, 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 yes. And at, at the church has to do a better job. The church has to do a better job of encouraging therapy, you know, and um, following through with the process. Yes, I definitely, definitely agree. So what do you do when you're not writing? What, um, uh, and, and, and singing. What what else do you do? Um, I love going online and seeing people's hair gets transform get transformed, people's houses or rooms get transformed. And I love I love romantic comedy. I like comedy. Period. But I I love romantic comedy movies. And yeah, <laughs> that's that's what I'm I'm doing. I'm doing because I do a lot of heavy stuff. So I like the rest of my life to be light and fun, spending time with family, joking and pulling pranks on each other. I love to do that. Amen. I love that. I love that. I love that. So how can people get in touch with you? Um, even get your music, um, get your book when it comes out. Well, to get the book when it comes out, um, go to don'tdisappointdaddy.com and get on my wait list so I can let you know right when it comes out. So yeah, the, that's dis, don'tdisappointdaddy.com. And all the music is on Gospel Vocalist dot com so those are the two websites actually if you go to gospel vocalist you'll see the book too so but i think don't disappoint daddy.com is easier to remember since it's the name of the book and are you like on any social media websites or anything like oh, that? oh yeah yeah oh i'm on i'm on facebook and instagram and you can look up gospel vocalist you probably find me 
Yep. Amen. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. Is there anybody you would like to shout out or anything like that? Ah, shout out to my family. Shout out to my to my friends, my new friends. Um, shout out to all the kingdom entrepreneurs that are expanding God's kingdom. God bless you. Let's do it. Well, thank you guys for joining us with, on another episode of the Author Push Talk Show. Until next time, bye guys.
That's what I'm talking about, Lord. Thank you. Stories help us to understand the world around us. They allow us to laugh. They allow us to cry. They give us the ability to feel and provide us with an outlet to heal. Join me as I get to know some of the amazing people behind the stories that we read in order to truly discover the story that has been hidden within each of us. My name is Bree Smith, and this is the Author Push Talk Show.